Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's panel discussion on the science of color presented by Roche Bobois. My name is Kisa Castaneda. I'm the editorial director for Homes and Travel for Tatler Asia, and I'll be the moderator for today's panel discussion. So I'm delighted to introduce you guys to two of our special guests today and panelists. They're two of the leading design minds in Singapore. We have with us Nikki Hunt, founder of Design Intervention, and Andrea Savage, co-CEO of Design Intervention. As you can see, we're live streaming in this very colorful showroom of Roche Bobois in Singapore, and the panelists are aptly colorful as well. I have a little colorful scarf here. <laughs> um, but before we begin, I'd like to show you a short video on Roche Bobois, just for, you, for, for everyone to get to know the brand a little bit more. event we're going to have a fun design challenge and two winners will get something special from Roche Baba. But before I explain more about the design challenge, let's delve deeper into today's topic, the science of color. So Nikki, would you like to say a few words first and say hello? I'm Nikki Hunt and this is my business partner Andrea and we absolutely love design. And color is one of our favorite tools to use to craft a space. 
So we couldn't be more excited to be here. And what a fabulous environment to talk about <laughs> our favourite subject. I know, we're completely and utterly surrounded by colour and these sofas are absolutely amazing. Yes. This, yes. this collection is incredibly colourful. It's a really fun, light-hearted space, and so it's a great backdrop for our topic today. Yeah, real, and we're setting the tone definitely for today's topic. Um, before we begin on the color part of the discussion, I wanted to start with the home. Of mm -hmm. course, our whole universe for the mm. entire, you know, for the past year has been the home. How have, how have you think the role of the home has changed in the past year? Which qualities of the home do you think has been amplified over 2020, 2021? Well, well, I think no one has spent more time at home than they have in the last year. And I think that they are rediscovering what home means to them and um, what it's like as a sanctuary, how it makes them feel. I, I, I can't agree more heartily. I mean, I think last year was probably the most traumatic year that any of us can remember. And if we've learnt anything from the year, I think it's how important home is to us. Um, I don't think that... Um, the concept of home as a, as a sanctuary is necessarily brand new. I, but I think COVID and the pandemic has just given it a turbo boost. Sure, yes. Um, and it's made more and more people, really, as they're locked down in their four walls, realize just how important their environment is. In your company, you're, you actually follow this interesting motto, which is form follows feeling. So the famous axiom is actually form follows function. Can you explain a little bit more about this philosophy, design interventions philosophy? I think that we're finding that a lot of clients that walk in their door looking to design their homes, the first question that we would ask them is how do you want to feel in the space? Mm -hmm. I think if you address that, you're, and it's the whole psychology of design which is where the psychology of colour comes in as well. Um, they're two, uh, it's a, to make them work together it's like you know, creating a symphony, it can be extraordinary. No, I, I think that so. I wouldn't say we don't follow function. We right. definitely yes, do. Yes, we do. So it's really what your goal is mm. in building your home. Mm. Um, if you, so for us, our goal uh, when we design a home is to create a space where you feel fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all had we those. All want that, yeah, for sure. we've, <laughs> and, and now up. more than ever before. But we've all had those horrible days where we've had a bad day, we've been stuck in traffic, we've had an argument with a friend, and we want to come home shut that door on the outside world and have our own sanctuary. Um, and colour, space, light, all our design tools, texture is one of my favourites. And I'm looking at this yes, rug and this beautiful yeah. texture. But all these tools can help us. When we look at a space, we'll say, how do we want to feel in that space? And function is part of it, because if we're irritated because hmm. something doesn't work very well or we can't find that dress that we're looking for, mm -hmm that's going to stress us out. If it doesn't look good, because um, aesthetically pleasing space will also make us feel good. But how we want to feel, so if we're doing a living room, we want to encourage conversation. We want people to feel friendly. Mm. We want to, if we're designing a bedroom, we want people to feel relaxed. Mm. Yes. A, a bathroom, the same. So we think about these spaces, how we're going to use them and function as part of it, but more importantly, how we want to feel in them. So it's more about creating a mood, but also making sure that it works for you. You know, it, it can't just be creating a mood and it doesn't function well. It's everything. It's beyond aesthetics. It's beyond function. Mm. It's feeling. It's, it's life. It's, 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 it's make us feel good. I think that, yes. at the end of the day... Which also enhances our well-being. I mean, at the core of last year is about our well-being, about mm. how do we want to feel. Um, and I know that might seem like a very broad topic, but these days, People are stuck in their homes, and so they are of paramount importance to make you feel great. So when you've had a bad day, maybe it's normal. People understand that, oh, we put on some nice soft music sure. and it will soothe us. Or we can do like Meredith Grey style and dance it out and have something uplifting. Um, or some people will a tub of ice cream to get yeah. their serotonin <laughs> kick. That's right? True. We all That's know true. about that. But actually, design also can give us that serotonin kick. It can uplift us, uh, or it can calm us, like a, a soothing, lovely classical piece. Sure. Um, and so what we try and do is we try and restore and replenish. And that's what we see the role of a home is. And that's why we say form follows feeling. Beautiful. I think let's delve into one of the tools, which is mm -hmm. you know the topic for today, which mm. is color. And you guys have been part of the panel choosing the color of the year for Julux. 
can you tell us, because you, you've chosen the call of the year for 2021, two years ago, am I mm. right? Can you tell us how do you, how does this work? How do you decide like what will be color of the year two years later? Well, first of all, we were very honored to be invited to be part of the panel in the first place. And this is designing the color for the entire world. Um, Amazing. It's not just Asia, but we represent Asia along with some other esteemed designers from this region. And we sit down with a panel of experts around the world um, in various fields. And we look at and discuss where the world, how we see the world, how we potentially see the world actually in two years mm -hmm. time from now and where we might be moving and how color can embrace support um, and be a, and be a guiding as well as an illuminating factor at that time and in that year. But I, think, I think for this year, the color of the year that Julux picks yeah. the panel that we were on is uh, Brave Ground. Mm. And so when we do this, uh, we're sworn to secrecy. Like before they make their formal yeah. announcement, we're not allowed to say, obviously. How long beforehand did you know? We, we, we like know. Six months before. Uh, uh, even before, before that, that yes. actually. Um, but this time, because of COVID, they, we did have an interim meeting to sure. discuss, like, hmm. yeah, do we still, so much going on in the world, do we still feel uh, that the brave ground is, is, is still relevant? So we have, but this year, brown. It's effectively a brown. <laughs> it's a lovely name, brave brown. Yeah. But um, effectively, brown is such an unusual choice, mm -hmm. a real kind of out there, left to field, something completely different. And it's fascinating. Yeah, but what we love about it is, I think brown was so associated several years ago, a few years ago on sustainability. Everything's yes. about sustainability. Yeah. But the movement towards brown now is that it's providing a home foundation. It's giving you that support, that nurturing, that renewal, so that you feel like you can open the front door and go and face the world. So mm. brown has taken on a completely different philosophy. Like a grounding element. Absolutely, yeah. more than just on the sustainability aspect. and and. Two years ago, um, who would have thought yeah. that it would be as relevant as it is today? What I love about it is, so I'm a mother, right? Andrea's a mother. And as a, as a mother, we realize that when our kids, they want a bit of fun, they lock around with their dads or they play with their friends. Sure. When they're sick, and my kids are grown up now, but it's still exactly the same. When they're <laughs> sick or they're low, they want their mother. And it's exactly the same as, as adults. Our mother is mother nature. Yes. And when we're looking at a color, because we're all confused, we've got the pandemic, we've got climate change, we've got global political uncertainty. This is the most uncertain time that any of us have ever yes, lived that's, in. That's very and so reaching for a nurturing, soothing, supportive color just makes perfect sense. So I guess maybe two years ago, obviously no one could have predicted what happened last mm. year, but it's just amazing how you know, you're mm. able to tell um, you know, the mood, the collective mood to you. But we had later. a lot of conversations about climate change. I remember on that committee, there was a lot about what's going on in the world. Um, Trump, Donald Trump was in right. power. Yes. There was a lot of talk about that and the way the world was changing. So. It, it's, it's still very relevant. It was, it was still really a precursor. And so I guess it was just moving yes. in that direction. Yeah. Yeah. And interestingly enough, you know, other brands have named their color of the year. Um, and it's fascinating to see that they've gone for a similar angle mm -hmm. um, in terms of offering a color which is supportive, which is about renewal. Um, it's fascinating. Mm -hmm. The whole idea of like calming, supportive, mm. grounding, and all that. I wanted to ask a little bit more about color psychology, which a term you mentioned earlier. Could you expound a bit about that? Because for, for many of us when, from a young age, they'll ask you, what's your favorite color, blue or mm. pink? Or, you know, it's some, just something you have an affinity for. But what does color psychology actually mean? Well, you know what I really loved about today's talk? When you invited us to talk, you called it the science of color. Mm. And I thought that was so apt, because so often people think selecting color is just a bit arty, a bit fluffy. Yeah, a bit fluffy. Um, <laughs> and it really is completely the opposite. Um, because at its basic, what is color? Let's think about what is color. So color is energy, and that might sound mm. a bit like a sound bite, but I mean it literally. Color is light energy. And each different color is a different wavelength of energy. I mean, this sounds like a high school physics class, right? Because it is Happy science. to be educated. <laughs> but, but it's science. So when light enters our eyes, when different colors, different wavelengths enter, enter our eyes, it does two things. So one is obvious. Any small child will tell you we use our eyes to see. Okay? Yes. 
So we all know that. Uh, but something else happens. Light triggers a different part of the brain, as well as the visual part. It triggers a part of the brain that has absolutely nothing to do with sight. It mm. triggers a part of the brain that regulates our hormones, that triggers our, that affects our mood, our respiratory rate, our heart rate, and how we feel. So different colors affect that part of the brain in different ways. Mm -hmm. uh, so it is completely science. What's so exciting is we can use that information to craft environments that affect our mood or, and make us feel better. Which and is basically your, your job. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So when, when we have a client, we say to them, how would you like to feel in your dining room, for example? Yeah. Not everybody wants to have their appetite voraciously stimulated. <laughs> uh, and we no. all know, or many people know, that red, of course, would do that. You could opt for a slightly softer hue, like an orange, mm -hmm. um, which doesn't stimulate your appetite to such a degree that you need to, to um, be super full. Mm -hmm. um, so when we, when we talk to our clients, we ask them, how do you want to feel in the space? And that does go back to the color psychology. Mm -hmm. um, and then we address their preferences, because even if we were to say to somebody, do you like the color orange? They might not like the color of orange at all. Mm. I think people really don't understand how powerful color can be. Mm. No, so yeah, if I give, me, give you a couple of examples. So in Japan, in the Tokyo metro stations, in a few of them, they installed blue lights. And what they found was the instance of suicide dropped by 74% mm. with blue, light. With blue mm. light over a station that didn't have it, down 74%. And then I think in Switzerland, I think Switzerland, where they've painted the inside of jail cells pink. And when they have really aggressive inmates who've had a fight, they put them in there to calm down because it's, the colors have a real measurable mm. effect. And so for us, um, we, we try and use this knowledge uh, and this science as part, as one part, it's not the only part, but definitely as one part. Yeah, definitely designs. there's also in your toolbox texture, as you mentioned, Absolutely. shapes like what we're sitting on mm. in the Bomb Bomb collection. Um, tell us, because a lot of your projects obviously have a, this harmonious mix of color, texture and shapes, how difficult is, that? is it actually to create, I wouldn't always say maximalist, but a layered space the way you guys do it? I think. I think a layered space in an interior is so important. It gives it multi-dimensions. There's, there's no point in having color if you don't light it. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a baby that's lying down and they can feel the texture of something, they can feel instantly soothed. Mm -hmm. So an interior has, and again, often people think interior and interior design is a very fluffy application. Mm -hmm. And it's not because it's all of those aspects working together and you go back to that form, function, form, feeling, it's all, it, it's, it's incredibly harmonious in the way that it's put together. To find that balance is a very individual process. Right. Um, not every client wants the same application of texture, not, uh, not every client wants the same application of colour. So I know we're known um, for our colour and our bold use of it, um, and we showcase that to a certain extent because that's one of the hardest things to achieve in interior design, to be able to put that mix together. In, in a harmonious manner and do it successfully. But design is, is, uh, is multi-sensory. Yes. So we work with texture, we work with space, we work with light to stimulate so many senses mm. really to create that environment. Color is one tool. It's a very powerful tool. It's one that's fun to, fun to use. But if you work, so if somebody said to me, um, I want a really calm space. Right. And a lot of people will say, will think that it's... It like, has to be white yes. and grey. Yes, yes. 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 So it's painted mm. all white. But actually, if you have too much white, um, it can actually cause feelings of anxiousness. Really? Yeah. Like it's too cold. It's too cold. Yes. And, it, and people can get quite... Uh, most like hospital. It's very clinical. Clinical, yeah. that's yeah. the word, yes. Um, and it's, so it's actually the opposite of calming. Uh, doesn't mean to say you have to inject color into it. You can balance the whiteness with texture, which brings in a warmth. Um, so it's about playing with all the elements in our toolbox, really, to create the environment that we're asked to create. Mm, absolutely. Um, I'd like to, if you could give us a specific example, maybe in your own homes. I mean, we featured both of your homes mm. in Battler Homes, um, of how to really, for people who are just beginning, you know, to experiment with color, what would be your advice? 
I, I, th I think one of the most important things is to, is to know what you like and be true to it. I think that's a great starting place. Um, for example, in my own home, you know, I really, really love jewel colors. I love mm. the injection and I, and I like cobalt blues. It's, you know, I'm not just wearing this today because we're <laughs> sitting in a colorful showroom. I, I love cobalt blue. Um, and I like this particular hue of it as well because it gives me energy and it makes me feel strong and it gives me a solidarity. But I wouldn't want this in my bedroom. Um, right. For me, my bedroom would have to be a lot calmer and it would have to be more of a, a neutral base, um, but still with a little pop of color and that could be bought in um, in a lamp or it could be bought in a decorative accent. So I think in a home, one of the most important things, as, as I said earlier, is to start with what you like. Um, don't always go for the trends because trends, trends go and they come and go and eventually you get tired of them yourself. Yeah. But I think, you know, Nikki has her, palette, her preferred palette as well. But I think it's also, it's a misconception to think mm. that colour means bright. Yes, yes. It, colour, that's true. It, it, they're, they're tones. Um, and you can, they're tones, I mean, this is a beautiful orange fun mm. sofa that we have here. But other, which is up, very uplifting. But other yes. softer tones like coral are also uplifting, but they're more gentle. Mm. Um, so I think it depends what you like. Greys, beiges, caramels, camels, they're all neutral tones mm. as well. Um, I think the key is to find what suits you and what makes you feel good. As Andrea said, it's very yeah. personal. And also what suits the space, I suppose. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Like, so I mean, I think light, natural light's important, but also, you know, we're always looking at a nod towards nature and biophilic, mm -hmm. you know, reference to uh, in design is, is so prevalent at the moment. But it doesn't always have to mean that's to do with foliage or yeah. greenery. So I have a particular penchant for black and white, like I absolutely love it. And even though it might not be a conscious decision in my own personal interior, it's something that I move towards. But then I think that I absolutely resonate with zebra. Like I just yes. love it. I love that yeah. animal. I love the way that animal looks. And for me, that is a reference to nature. And that's not colorful. Mm -hmm. But there's something that I just love and it makes me feel it actually just makes me feel like, like it's safari. Complete. No, I'm kidding. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just that's that's quite now. nice at this yeah. present moment. But no, but there's something about that reference to mm. nature, even in that particular reference. I think it would be lovely for us to be able to say to people, okay, it's really simple. Green promotes concentration, which it does, so everyone should paint Red their house. Appetite. Red, Red appetite. Red appetite uh, boosts confidence, which is why I'm wearing it today. Uh, <laughs> but... Yes, or lavender, it promotes sleep, which it does. So yes. let's all paint our bedrooms purple. Um, but it isn't that simple. Uh, it's, I mean, I, like to, to give a, a, a metaphor, a colorful metaphor, it's not black and white. Yes. It's shades of gray, <laughs> right? <laughs> I love it. And, it. and it just means that it's all about the balance. Yeah. If you have one color, it will look very different depending on the light that comes right. in the room. It will look very different depending on the associated colors that are next to it which may intensify or calm it down so maybe that's why we have a job yeah. <laughs> yeah. definitely yeah. and award and all, a lot of your projects are actually award-winning projects let's talk about one of your particular projects mm -hmm. which, in which you use color and you also use Roche Bobois which is a Bangkok penthouse mm. which won another award recently yes right? we just heard last week actually that it won the best bathroom in the world that's amazing uh, which we're really excited about particularly because bathrooms for us are all about wellness they're yes. all about a sanctuary mm. so I think that you have a few pictures on your website yes of our bathroom. <laughs> on the slide you yeah. can't see the bathroom but it's on tatlerhomes.com mm. yes but I think on the slide that you're looking at now it's a really um, interesting project um, of course we've used Roche Bois, which we, we really like the injection of those pieces but I think if you're looking at the color palette that we've used um, it references Pantone's color of the year for 2021 which is ultimate gray and illuminating so the yellow and the gray together just they offset each other and they they are the perfect example of what mm. we're talking about I think on its own gray can be mm. too cold right. uh, it actually psychologically it's shown to give feelings of, of, of depression really? if you used I too much yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you love it but presumably you but balanced it with, with wood yes, maybe or wood. With yes, yes. Or, or foliage or to, to, to soften it a little bit and here we've balanced it with yellow which is the most uplifting hue um, but the Roche Bois pieces are interesting where we put them in because this is actually a guest bedroom that you're looking at 
Um, we wanted something that was calm because it's a bedroom space, but not serious. Yes. Um, and the Roche Bobois pieces are interesting, they're unexpected, but in the plain white, mm. they are still very calm and gentle. So it was a perfect pairing for this room. Yeah, what's nice is it's also about the shape of the pieces. Ooh, absolutely. So it's not, it doesn't always have to be as, mm. like this neon orange here. You can't see it, but there's a yeah. neon orange <laughs> bonbon sofa in front of us. So you've been in the business here in Singapore for a long time. Mm -hmm. And you've seen, you mentioned to me once before that you've seen the attitudes towards design change and that the participation of your clients used to be maybe only one person giving their insights, but now, you know, the kids will you know, give their preferences, mm -hmm. the husbands are more involved. Can you tell us a little bit about like how preferences have evolved over the years and what are your findings here in Singapore? Our clients, um, you know, they're coming in the door and they, I mean, they've traveled and they've seen the world and they've come back with, um, you know, things that have influenced them, uh, which is lovely. But I think instead of being um, a one person vision, it's, it's a, a united vision that they're working towards in, in terms of creating their space when it comes to their home. And it's, and it's fascinating to listen to the interaction between boyfriend and girlfriend, husband and wife, uh, siblings, to, to talk about the spaces that are important to them uh, and how it makes them feel, how they want to feel in that space. And it, it's such an amazing journey because um, what we love about our job is in terms of having a, a style, we work with so many different styles, we, right. we implement so many different aesthetics. And um, one of the things we personally love is that it's a learning journey. So it's not just about the psychology of design, it's a, the psychology of colour, but also the psychology of our client and what they're looking for. And a home just means so much to them on so many different levels. So that, that united vision that the family has, or to be honest, sometimes they don't have a united vision yes. to start off with. Um, Is and that so, easier? Uh, not always. <laughs> no, 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 they can be a little no. bit fractious, one could say. Um, but, but I think what's so lovely is that we often find that they've got different styles and there's a dominant style right. that they'll eventually gravitate towards. Um, and because we're very passionate about what we do, we love to pull that out of them so that the end result is something that they truly love. We want them to so love you're it. like a detective. Like, <laughs> absolutely, yeah. uh, absolutely. But I think just to follow on from your question, when we first, well, when I first started out, it used to be just the mm. wives coming in, picking a few colours, yeah. and the husband wasn't so interested. But particularly over the last 10 years, there's been this growth in the wellness industry. Right, yes. And people have realised that the home mm. is just as fundamental to wellness as good nutrition and exercise. Mm. Your home environment can. Yeah, well, as sleep we, can change absolutely, everything. So exactly. Absolutely. Yeah, a good night's sleep boosts and our water. immunity. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, uh, absolutely. So increasingly, we've seen the husbands come mm. in um, not because they're interested in you know, swatches, yeah, but because they're in, interested in creating a home environment that relaxes them. Because we're all ever, so stressed all, every day in, in, in these busy city lives. So we've really noticed that, um, and I think that's probably been the biggest change. It's a whole family looking, and maybe in the past people used their homes to impress other people. They yeah. were a symbol of wealth. Mm. Now they want their homes to nurture them. Mm -hmm. And that's a family decision. Do you think that, um, you know, that you have a lot of projects coming up but still, um, we're all very lucky mm. that you know, the mm -hmm. projects keep enrolling. What are the demands or like, what are the requests? Have they changed over the year, over the pandemic year? Are they asking for bigger home gyms or something of that sort? Well, I think it goes without saying that they're asking for the home office um, or a space to be able to work from home, especially if they've got families and it's you know a multi-generational family living there. Acoustics. Acoustics right. is definitely one, yes. Yeah. Uh, I think also, what I find very interesting is also a trend for kitchens. So we're finding that a lot of our male clients are particularly interested in the kitchen. Oh, um, whether I think there's a, there's a mix of, of the reasons a, why. I think it's a place where mm. families come together. Mm. And I think we're all valuing our family more so than ever before. Maybe we took things for granted. <laughs> but just coming together and sitting and just the simple pleasures of being yeah. with loved ones and talking. Uh, and if you do that casually over the kitchen table. I mean, over the years, we probably found dining rooms 
like moving away, like people not closing up their dining rooms and all this open plan living, oh, yes, like knocking yeah. down walls. Yeah. So that's changing because during the lockdown, our dining rooms were the place. Yes, we worked, cleared the table, we sat <laughs> around together and talked and put away our devices. Yes. So no yeah. phones allowed. Yeah. But, but I think going back to your question about the home gyms as well. So I think uh, during, you know, when we were really in the phase of the lockdown with COVID, home gyms were, of course, paramount importance. Yes. But I think now it's about it's a balance because I think people are enjoying um, the outdoors a lot more. I think that they're, they're looking for a complementary space right. to what's outside the house rather than a space that replaces it completely. Because mm. now we're very lucky here in Singapore yeah, that absolutely. You know, we can go out a little mm. bit more. Yeah. We're nearing the end and I'm going to look at the questions from the audience. So if you have, want to ask a question, please type into the chat box and I'm going to get into them in a minute or so. But um, I just wanted to ask, you mentioned, Nikki, earlier that it's not black and white. It's mm. not easy to um, give a tip, but I'm still <laughs> going to ask you for a tip. <laughs> if you could give yeah. like one tip for people to sort of maybe be braver when it comes to color or just some insight on the psychology of color for their home. Could you share either a tip or a piece of advice? Um, I think finding out what you love, is, as Andrea said earlier, is the most important. So one thing I often say to clients is go into your closet and have a look. People are naturally drawn to certain colors. What do you normally buy? Uh, so that's, that's a good tip. And then take out a lovely scarf or a shawl and put it over your sofa and look at it and live with it or wrap it around a cushion and see mm. how it makes you feel. So that's something that we often say to people. So sort of like painting your wall with different colors. Yeah. So you, yeah. you just see it for like a few Absolutely. days. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, yeah, I think just exploring that side of you and, and not being afraid to change your mind just because you have to make it, just because you make an initial decision, if it's not right for you, then change your mind. That's okay as well until you find that balance. And digest it. So one of the things I often find is we start painting a wall and it may be kind of a soft beige, but when it goes on a, on a pure white wall and it's halfway down, the contrast between the beige and the white people will come in and go, oh my God, it's too dark. Oh. And we just have to say, just wait, let us do the whole room. And it takes on a whole new life. Or like, please come back when it's done. Yes. So, uh, <laughs> and how everything yes. else that's put in works together. So it's not looking at decisions in isolation. Right. That's, that's, that's see, it. You guys can like off the cuff <laughs> tips. There are really going to be more off the cuff tips on, uh, on Instagram later. We have a lot of questions actually. So I'm going to, they're like 10. Okay. But, um, okay. We, we have a little bit of time. So okay. we can, okay. sure. we can okay. go into them. So you mentioned, are there any rules about using too much color? That's a good question, I think. Is I mean, that's a great question, actually, whoever asked that. Um, I think that there, there can be an application of too much color. Um, so I wouldn't say to you, just you know, take the paint and start putting it everywhere. Because I think, again, in a space like that, your eye doesn't get a chance to rest. Yeah. So what's, what's very important, and if you look at a lot of um, successful interiors, um, even if you look at some of our own projects, we have a lot of negative space. Um, whether we might have a backdrop of a white wall in there that you wouldn't have noticed, but it's, it allows the colors to come to life, to breathe, to take um, a dominance on their own without fighting each other. The colors shouldn't fight each other. Mm -hmm. So there is that question here that actually is there, um, are there colors that simply don't work together? No. So I, I can <laughs> easily say that. That's absolutely, a quick no. <laughs> absolutely not. Because it all, de all depends on tone. Yeah. So maybe a, cer a certain shade of red, particularly in a hot climate like this, mm -hmm. you wouldn't put it on your dining room wall. But tones, definitely. So y y there is no rule that these two colors don't work together. Some tone of it will. So, okay. example, yeah. Nikki's example. dress with a hot pink boot. <laughs> yes, okay, yeah. Okay, I'm sure some of you are looking at that going, yeah. right, oh, that's a yeah. pretty cool combination. Yeah. So, yeah, but the tone works. But it's a little yeah. bit unexpected. Yeah. It just <laughs> shares yeah. a bit. And actually, one of my colleagues was wearing yeah. similar Absolutely. tones, so it's yeah. very yeah. chic. Exactly. Yeah. Um, another question is about how do you continue to be inspired by color? Can you name like a specific place or perhaps, you know, when we used to travel? A place that inspired you or a shop that inspired you, Roche Bobois aside, because we know we're inspired by this place, that is colorful and that just, you know, makes you happy. Well, I think as cliche as it sounds, uh, you know, whether you can travel or not, I think nature just provides such an abundance of color, um, as do cultures. Uh, even within our own culture here in Singapore, 
you know, you can go to Little India with the Diwali light, and honestly, it's an explosion of colour. And I love how they will just put something that you're not expecting together, and you just think, wow, I absolutely love that. So I think it's, it's a shame that we're not being able to travel abroad, but the nature for, for is amazing. For me, I actually have the opposite problem. <laughs> it's not a matter of finding inspiration, <laughs> it's, it's switching off. Yeah. So if you're passionate about it, everything you see, a braid on somebody's dress, the leaf yes, on a tree, the, a plate in a restaurant, yeah. uh, even watching TV, we'll be looking oh at it gosh, and you'll see yes. the sets. You yeah. know, did you see the Bridgerton sets? Yes. They're beautiful, yes, beautiful, the pastel shape. Mm. So, um, no, I think if you love it and you're interested, inspiration's everywhere, always. Yeah, I, I agree with that. There's another question about, let's go a little bit more on the client side. How do you work with clients who are hesitant in corporate color? And what are the timeless color combinations you suggest to those who can't make up their minds? Um, I think if somebody is, and again, as we said, color doesn't mean bright. Yes. Okay, so I think we would never push somebody uh, to do a design or implement a color scheme that they don't love. Because at the end of the day, we go home, it's their house, and we've done our job if they're happy and they love it. Um, but I think helping them push their own boundaries and discovering what they really love, that's our role. Hmm. And I think that's why a lot of clients come to us, because they're interested in colour. Mm -hmm. um, and again, our portfolio show, show, like showcases that in abundance, um, and they appreciate that. But yes, initially, I think in the, the design concept phase, we would just explore their reaction. Okay. And then they will, because it's something that they genuinely love, they will move towards that in their own time and commit to that application of it. And I think that's something that we find incredibly satisfying to take them on that journey um, with an end result, which they obviously love. So it's like working as a detective. So you have the, the detective <laughs> mode and then the therapy <laughs> mode later on when they yeah. can't commit. But yeah. most of them would commit the words. No, not necessarily. We have a lot of clients that ask for neutral palettes, but neutral is still mm. a colour. So yeah. we can play with the different tones to make it exciting. We can add textures to sure. make it more exciting. Um, so so that, that's what we do. Yeah, or like some of our clients, one in particular at the moment, he's got a, he absolutely loves art, and the art is the showcase for colour in his space. And the backdrop that we've designed is, is more muted, and it, it's a neutral palette. Actually, somebody just asked Oh, question. right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> exactly, like, what's a good colour to pick for a wall when you have a lot of colourful furniture and art? Oh. Yes. So, would yeah. it so be I think white? I, well, not necessarily. Mm. I think it's I think it's taking a neutral palette, and in interior mm. design, a neutral palette mm. includes greys, black, browns, whites, um, and taking that particular tone and then applying it depending on the art. But it's. But a, I it, think depending on the it, art, it's key. Yeah. You have to see the artwork. Yeah. Yeah. Because art, sometimes yes. actually putting it on a darker background mm. makes the art pop. Mm. Yeah. So we take everything into consideration, and then lighting the art is really Absolutely. important. Okay, I'll take one last question here and then we're, we're going to talk about the design challenge shortly. So what makes a space take your breath away? So it's hard to impress you ladies, I'm sure. <laughs> 20 years in the business and you know, you've traveled a lot. What would you say one thing that, you know, one aspect that would really like take your breath away? Attention to detail. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think having been in the industry for so long, uh, we, you know, we, we absolutely applaud other people's interior design. Uh, they're incredible and their visions are extraordinary. But I think when you walk into an interior and that attention to detail. And the finishing. And the yeah. finishing. Because I, I think that's the hardest to achieve. Yes. But, but also the restraint. I think when you can see the fact that as an interior designer, you can have it all. You can apply it all. But I think that restraint in the design mm. makes it perfection. Restraint, mm. detail. Mm. Yeah. And of course, color. <laughs> <laughs> the right color combination, yeah. which should, could be anything depending yeah. on the tone. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's, I love how you answered really quickly and it's like a hard no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, if you have any further questions, um, you can always reach out to us at Tatler Homes team via Instagram or at, at Tatler Homes. And we will liaise with the design intervention team for your questions. Or you could also ask the, the Roche Beauvoir team. So I promised you everyone about, uh, pro promised to tell you about the design competition. So one of the best things that happened over the last year is we get to spend more time in our homes and we get to reimagine our homes. So I'd like to introduce to you Roche Bobois Mahjong Sofa app. Here um, you can actually dream up 
your own mahjong sofa. And if you didn't know already, this is one of the most iconic pieces in, in Roche Bobois' repertoire. So here are the mechanics for the competition. Oh, before that, I'll show you the app first. So the contest and mechanics, very, very simple. So create a colorful sofa design using the app, okay? So the world is your oyster. You mm -hmm. can choose anything, literally. Upload the image or a screen grab of the image on IG or on IGS and make sure to tag the three accounts. So Tatler Homes, Roche Bobois, and our design intervention. Please make sure you post um, the screen grab or the image by February 26th, 1 p.m. And next week, we're going to let the two lucky winners know that they've won. <laughs> How exciting. <laughs> yes, yes. The, the prize is a surprise. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's something worth, it's something colorful, that, that, that one, you know. But it's not a mahjong so But it's not, <laughs> unfortunately. But you can always come by the showroom if you're interested to see the mahjong sofa. So thank you very much, Nikki, Andrea. Thank you for all your insights. And you know that... I'm, I'm not a super, super colorful person, but you always push me. Have we pushed you a little I bit? I know. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, today I really decided to yeah. wear black because yeah. I'm, we're, we're in this lovely space. But yes, I think I'm really, really inspired by your insight. And I'm sure the audience as well with their 10, 20 questions. <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll liaise and relay sure. the other questions to you as well. Thank you so much for Thank being you. part of this Thank discussion. Thank you for having us. Our pleasure. It's absolutely our pleasure. Thank you so much. And for everyone who joined us, thank you again. And have a colorful evening and weekend ahead. Bye. Bye. Bye.